welcome to Zine Club via Zoom. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start out by talking a little bit very quickly about what zines are and the different kinds of zines. And then I'm going to give um, a brief tutorial right down here on how to fold your kind of standard intro eight page zine, kind of the starting point for everybody. And then from there, you can obviously uh, do whatever you like, you know, be creative with it. That's kind of the whole point of zines, right? To kind of like think outside the box and, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, and then Liz is going to show you a really cool uh, watercolor um, background thing that you could do for your zines as well. And then we'll just hang out and make zines. I like to cut and paste, so I'll be doing that here. And Liz will be doing her like watercolor and stuff, so then we're just gonna hang out. Sound good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with what is a zine anyway. A zine is short for fanzine or magazine. It's a DIY subculture self-publication. Um, it's made usually just on regular uh, paper like this and with a photocopier or printer, you make a bunch of copies. Um, zine creators are often motivated by a desire to like share knowledge and experiences, um, especially people in marginalized or otherwise less empowered communities. It's not usually for a profit. Zine started kind of around the 1930s with sci-fi. That's where they, um, people, big fans of science fiction were making these zines and sharing them with each other. Then in the 70s and 80s, it kind of was in that punk rock scene. So underground, again, it's not meant to be uh, shared with a, you know, they're not looking for profit, they're not looking for fame with zines, you know, they want to like kind of share within their like subculture of stuff. So that was huge in like the 70s and 80s with punk. And then the 90s, we saw it again, kind of that similar punk, like female, Riot Girl, Bikini Kill, like those bands and that scene, zines uh, kind of made a comeback there as well in the 90s. And then I would say they pretty much been around obviously they've always been around you know but they're coming back in a big way now I think they're even more popular and um, more widely known than say they were even back in like 70s 80s 90s a lot of people are talking about them because it's such a great way um, for self-expression there's so many things that you can do with them and uh, that's why we started doing it at our library anyway with the teens and I think it's been uh, really great yeah, and I think it definitely ties into um, the kind of like maker revolution that we've been seeing in the past decade or so. Um, people are trying to uh, find creative outlets outside of the digital world um, to make and share creative things with each other. And I think that zines are a great format for that, which is, you know, definitely contributing to their comeback for sure. Awesome. Um, and there are many libraries now that are collecting zines, including Middle Country. We have a zine collection uh, in our underground, which is our teen space in the Center Reach building. So you can see a picture of that collection on the bottom of this slide here. Uh, we have lots of zines that uh, some of them are actually made by teens in our community that are in our zine club. And then a lot of them are zines that we have found uh, borrowed or purchased from artists and uh, Miss Rambo and I have gone to uh, zine fests in, this, in uh, New York City and stuff like that and that's where we uh, you know collect these things and we so we do have a monthly zine club uh, for teens we meet once a month usually on a Wednesday and we just hang out and make zines and learn new techniques and stuff like that uh, we find projects to work on together and stuff like that too so it's a lot of fun <laughs> So why should we make a zine, Nicole? <laughs> well, it's so easy, which it really is. I think that's another yeah. huge component to why they're so popular is you, all you need is paper and like a Sharpie or like a pencil if you want to like go really hard with it. Like you don't really need that much, which is like really why I enjoy it too. Like it doesn't need to be a whole production and because I don't have craft stuff. I'm not really a crafty person. So I just need either tape or glue, scissors, and paper and those things I can usually find so yeah yeah definitely and you have like total creative control when it comes to making zines not only in the format itself because you know you're taking a piece of paper and transforming it into whatever you want it to be really I mean there's so many different uh ways to fold zines uh and different like types of zines that uh, you could really make it about anything, as many pages as you want. Um, again, we're going to show you the basic kind of intro zine folding today. 
Um, but also the zine community is really fun and cool too. A lot of uh, really awesome artists and creators out there um, who are putting their work out in this format. So it's really cool. That's another great thing about going to Zine Fest, if you can get a chance to do so, uh, if you're near one, and obviously when it's different when we're allowed out of the house. Um, <laughs> if we go, can go to a Zine Fest though, it's a really interesting opportunity to meet the author, so to speak. Like, so you get to talk to them about their zine and like what made them make it or like some other stuff. It's just, it's really like a different aspect that you don't obviously get with books. You don't really usually get the opportunity yeah. or that's a, a very different, you know, it's harder to do sometimes. So that's a, I, I really like that part too, like interacting with the zinesters. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's something so personal about a zine, too, that it makes the artist, um, it like, it gives you like a, a deeper connection with them right off the bat when you're talking about their work in this way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in that regard, everyone's stories matter, which is why it's really cool that, um, you know, we're seeing zines coming up in uh, certain communities. Barnard Library, for example, in the city, they collect zines from women, non-binary people, and all members of their community, and they have like a feminist zine collection and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, in fact, right now, they are collecting zines made by women during uh, the COVID-19 outbreak to kind of save as a primary source for the future, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, we were, uh, with the other librarians, you we were talking about this the other day, like, we are now going to be all of us and our primary source just like the flu like the influenza or any kind of period in history where you know something big happened you go back and look at primary sources right we learned about that in history class like the actual diary that someone wrote in or if they made like a video or whatever so yeah. we are creating either zines or if you're making like TikToks, I don't know, like literally anything you make though now is like documentation and will be looked back upon in the years to come as like what people were doing and you know what their thoughts were and how they were like kind of handling this and stuff which Lots is like pretty crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's like really crazy to think about. No it is, it really is. Um, and it is really crazy to think about how we are in, you know living in history right now. So I don't know, it's really cool to um, you know, people don't journal like they used to back in, quote unquote, the olden days. I mean, of course, we have social media. And I don't know, when I was younger, we used a live journal and stuff like that. But it's a little different. Um, it's not as personal, I think, in some ways. Um, and it's just, um, it's not necessarily always the same type of like record of daily life that someone's journal would have been, you know, uh, that we would look at now from back in history, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, Scenes are a really cool way to just talk about, you know, your personal life. And uh, in fact, today, one of the demos I'm going to show you is kind of planning out a zine and I'm going to do a day in the life of uh, working from home. So, <laughs> 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 um, and there's lots of different types of zines too, if you want to talk about that real quick. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, I think a lot of what we do are like mini comics, DIY zines somewhat, sometimes uh, fan zines definitely, so zines that are about a fandom of some sort. Art or, zines. What's that? Art zines. Yes, definitely a lot of art zines. You, art zines are really the biggest one I think in our zine club um, mm. for sure. That's the type of zine that I like to make the most as well. Um, and per zines too, or personal zines, uh, which I think would be probably the closest equivalent to like journaling or a diary or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's it. I think that's a good overview of what zines are, what you can do with zines. And you can yeah. like mix up any of these types of zines. You can like mash them together. You could do like an art zine that's a fan zine, you know, like however you want to do it. So these yeah. are some of the types. Yeah. Right. So do you want to learn how to fold a zine? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to turn off my screen share so we can focus in on Nicole's above view camera. All right. Am I big or is my, is this big? Yes, your paper is big. Good, okay, all right, well, my, my <laughs> so let me switch that, because I don't want, there we go. Okay, so we have our eight and a half by 11, and you're gonna need scissors for this, 
And if you have something hard to make the fold or like the creases creasier, <laughs> you might want to use that as well. Um, I, I have a ruler, but it's like a flexible ruler, so it really doesn't help. Um, so we're just going to kind of work with it, but uh, you, don't, you don't need it if you don't have it. Okay, so first we're going to fold hot dog style. All right, then open it up. Okay. And then we're going to fold it like a card. Give it a nice crease. Okay, so now we have this way and this way, right? So now, keeping it this way, we're going to fold it again, but just a quarter, right? So just fold this into that first middle crease. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see, right, it's going to be eight pages. You can see the kind of eight pages we're going for here. Fold it this way again, right? Oh, no, wait, fold it okay. again. <laughs> Remember your style. I can yeah. do it both. <laughs> I turn it around to myself, okay. And now on this, so if it opens up over here where it's folded on this seam, you can see it, this one, we're gonna cut, but don't cut all the way through, right? You're just gonna cut up to here. Okay, and then stop. All right, now open it up. This is like the trickiest part usually, like this is like the most awkward. So you're gonna fold it hot dog style again, and then just squish it in. There you go. It's really not that hard, but at first it feels a little awkward. Squish it in, and then it kind of just folds onto itself, right? So squish it in, fold it. Right. So then you have, right, I never know how this works. <laughs> so yeah, I know, but, I always kind of play around with it a little bit to see like how it sits the best, you know what I mean? I like change the front page around to see how it folds the best. That yeah, and there's different ways. I've seen actually different ways to fold a zine even to get to this point. So, and I think one time I was teaching the um, kids in zine club and someone figure out like a different way to do it. So I can't just do it this way. And I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so like even the best thing about zines, you can do it however, however you want. You really can. <laughs> so then you'll have your front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back cover. So there you go. That's how you fold the zine. It's really easy. And once you start doing it, you get the hang of it and they just so then like what normally would happen would be this would be like your master copy, say. Okay. So you'll be making this zine um, for me, like I'm cutting and pasting stuff onto it and it'll be my master copy, which I then take to a copy machine, a photocopier, and I make a bunch of copies off of that. And then those would be the ones that I would give away or you know, if I wanna sell them for a dollar or however I wanna do it. Um, and then you always kind of have your master copy so you could you know, do reprints and make more if you want. So this one that we're making today is our master copy. And then again, when we're out and about again, you can come down to the library and you can make a bunch of copies of your quarantine zines. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, so then, I started, oh, sorry, sorry, because if later on anyone's uh, like missed that and you want to do it again, like just put it in the chat, show us again and we can fold something, you know, and show Oh you. yeah, definitely. Um, so I started making a, I don't know if you, a quarantine. <laughs> oh, someone muted me. Hold on. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is my Corin zine. zine. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you how to do this kind of like watercolor tape resist background. Um, and I chose this because it's super easy. Um, and I like using watercolors with zines because they're really translucent. So they make a really nice background uh, for your zines because you can write over them. And my lighting in here is not the best right now, so you can't see it too well, but this is like yellow here and here and blue and red. 
Um, so I am going to show you how to make this effect. And I'm going to kind of move my camera down like this so you can see what I am doing. <clears throat> so I'm going to unfold my zine. And I made this the same way that uh, Nicole just made that zine. So you can see again, like the eight pages and that cut in the middle. Um, and this is actually my first page here. I like to number them when I fold it. So that way I know the order it goes in. Um, because when you fold it back out, this is page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's not necessarily something you would think, um, which is why I like to number it. So when I unfold it, I know where all of my pages are going, right? Um, so I have my watercolor palette here, and I'm just going to kind of describe what I'm doing as I go along. And if you guys have questions, you can type them uh, in the chat box and maybe Nicole can read them out to me um, as we're going along if you guys have questions, okay? So the first thing you'll want to do is get some masking tape. And if you don't have watercolors at home, that's fine. You can really use any kind of tape or even just markers. And I actually saw a really cool tutorial earlier where you can use washable markers and color on like a Ziploc bag or like a plastic sheet and then spray it with water and dip your paper on it. And when you pull the paper away, it'll look like watercolor, which is really cool. So I wanted to share that too, in case you have washable markers at home, but not watercolor paints. Um, so I am going to tape my page so that the watercolor paint doesn't bleed into the other pages. So what I want to do is just create a border around the whole page. And a good trick that I learned uh, when you're using the tape on your zine is to just like kind of stick it to the table or even like your shirt or your pants first to get some like fibers and stuff on there so it's not super sticky. Um, that way it doesn't rip your paper when you pull it off. So I'm just going to put my tape here. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. And then I'll do one more across the top. On the middle ones, they're not connected, so you don't necessarily really need it, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to show you what it looks like. Um, so you would wanna do this for all the other pages uh, where, they're, where they share a border, right? All right, so I've got tape all the way around my second page here. And then the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is just put my design down for the tape resist. So I pre-cut some of the pieces of tape in half so they're a little bit thinner. And you could really do like all different thicknesses or just keep it all the same, however you want, whatever you think looks best. And I'm just gonna kind of start lining them down on the paper in any kind of pattern. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> And then maybe we'll do one more piece down here. We'll go like right there. All right, so now I'm gonna have like four different areas where I'm gonna put in my watercolor. Um, so I'm just gonna take my paintbrush, my watercolor palette here, and I'm going to uh, dry brush this onto the paper. With watercolor, you can either put water down on the paper first, or you can just start putting the paint down. I find for this technique, it's best to keep the paper as dry as possible. Um, so you don't really want to pre-wet the paper too much, um, so it doesn't bleed over the tape. Uh, so I just loaded up my paintbrush with watercolor, and I'm going to go right onto the dry paper. So I'll start on this side. And just kind of work that watercolor around. And watercolor is a fun medium, but you don't have a whole lot of control over it, <laughs> is what I've found. Um, so I'm going to kind of just brush it around there. And I also try to keep the paper as flat as possible so it doesn't start running over the side of the tape. 
because if I let go, it kind of raises up a little bit on the folds. All right, and now I'm gonna do some red. Red down here. Do the red on the top too. You're just using the same brush and just rinsing it off? Yep, I just have a, I have a water jar here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just dipping the uh, paintbrush in there in between. And then we'll do a yellow one. So I also found with this technique, you really wanna make sure it's dry before you pull the tape off um, because if there's any water color still kind of pooled up at the edges of the tape, it'll start to bleed out uh, into the nice crisp lines that you want once you pull that tape away. Um, How long has it been taking for it to dry about? It dries super fast uh, because this is water, actually watercolor paper that I'm using. Uh, so it's thicker than normal paper. It's more like cardstock mm -hmm. and it soaks up the watercolor pretty quickly. Did you try it on regular copy paper? I did, um, but with watercolors, because it's water that you're using with it, it makes the paper um, warp as it dries. Mm -hmm. If you're using just like a plain like uh, Xerox paper like this. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to do this but you didn't want that effect, I would definitely recommend trying to get something a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. Or like I said, you can do this same technique with really any other kind of paint or markers that you have at home. It just right. might not have that same like translucent property that the watercolor does, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. Um, so we'll let that one dry and then in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to my first page here and show you kind of what I was planning to do here on my quarantine <laughs> cover. Um, so I have a Sharpie and I was just going to kind of go over the outline of my different taped sections to make them more defined. And this is definitely just like a artistic preference. If you like the way it looks without the line, then keep it without it, right? <clears throat> so then it would kind of look like that, right? So Thanks. while this is drying, I'm going to plan out what I want to put on each of my pages. So I think mostly everyone in our uh, program right now is in Zine Club. For yes. those of you who are in Zine Club, you've probably heard me say before um, that when I'm making a zine, I always like to plan out in advance like what I'm gonna put on each page because um, I think it helps me get my thoughts organized um, and have a plan for exactly how many pages I need um, and all that good stuff. So I started a list. <clears throat> before we got started of what I wanted to put on each page. And I literally just, you know, this is an eight page zine. Um, so I know, but I'm gonna have eight pages. <clears throat> so I just wrote out numbers one through eight and started writing what I wanna put on each page. So I've got my cover and then we'll do a day in the life of working from home. And I've got page three, walking the dog, page four, going on the computer. Five, walking the dog again. <laughs> More walking the dog later on. <laughs> Lots of dog walking. <laughs> uh, let me see if this is dry yet. Almost. Almost there. So like I said, this is a super simple technique. There's not a lot to it, um, which is why I wanted to show it today because we're all kind of just working with whatever we have at home, right? And, I wanted to show something that was a little versatile that you could do with other mediums too if you didn't have watercolors at home. Yeah, now this one kind of got a little bit messed up, but that's all right. I don't mind it. I'm not mad at it. And then you're gonna be like putting stuff over it, right? So yeah, exactly. So my plan then is to use the white space to write in. Um, so I'm going to kind of like write around the shapes and then I can use a Sharpie to draw over the paint mm -hmm. to like, I could put like a picture of like 
an alarm clock here for when I wake up in the day or a picture of my dog for <laughs> walking the dog, that kind of thing. Um, so, oh, and see it bled through on this side too, but that's okay. If you kind of just like mix it in with your finger like that, it looks like you did it on purpose. <laughs> it blends in better. <clears throat> I'm going all the way around. I'm not a very good drawer is one thing I've learned <laughs> as much as I try to be. I'm really just not, I'm a, I like painting and like fiber arts and stuff like that. But drawing has never been something that comes naturally to me. <clears throat> well, it's better than what I can do. So <laughs> I, I cannot draw at all. <laughs> so I cut and paste, cut and paste. I like doing cut and paste scenes too. Uh, I think they have a really cool look to them. I like that kind of uh, uh, <laughs> ransom note look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you do. Um, uh, another cool thing, if you guys happen to have a typewriter at home, uh, some people have them in their basements. Oh, um, yeah. That's a really fun look. So you can like type something on the typewriter and then cut it out and paste it in. I always like the way that looks. Yeah, that's fun. I think we've busted the typewriter out at the library for Zine Club a couple times. Yeah. It's always a novelty to play with that. <laughs> and then if you guys have a computer and printers at home too, you can make stuff on the, um, you know, print stuff out from the computer and, and paste it in. Or um, if you are like a digital artist, if you draw them there, I've, there have been plenty of digital zines. So yeah, that's pretty much it for how I'm going to be making this zine. Um, I'm going to start taping off the next page now. You can see it really doesn't take long for it to dry. I did pull this one piece off a little too early, so it bled over this edge a little bit. But like I said, I'm not really a perfectionist with this stuff because um, watercolors are hard to control. And I kind of like that little bit of messy look to it as well. <clears throat> All right, cool. Uh, do you want to bring everyone in as panelists. We know everybody. Yeah, right? let's do it. Yeah.